Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to a special edition review for the brand new Pink Floyd Adam Hart Mother Deluxe Edition. Uh, it's a two disc set. This version that I have here, $39 on Amazon. So it's a good deal. It was their fifth studio album at the time coming out in 1970. So here we are in 2023 getting a very cool deluxe edition of it. I'm going to break it all down here, give you a little review on the album, talk about it, unbox it, all that great stuff. And we'll do that in just a bit. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things do help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by turning on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on really cool videos just like this, where we're talking about Pink Floyd, Adam Hart, Mother, the deluxe edition that just came out for Friday, December 8th of 2023. So let me jump back a bit. I always like to give you guys a little bit of history here, because again, this usually ties into the things that are pertinent to this album. And so the band itself formed back in 65, uh, was one of the earliest psychedelic groups fronted by guitarist Sid Barrett, but he only played on the first two albums. Uh, after Barrett's departure, the band sort of fumbled along for a while, uh, trying to find its footing. At least that was uh, my impression of things. The bands have alluded to that, not really knowing where they wanted to go. They released More, which was a soundtrack in 1969, followed by a double album, Uma Guma, uh, which also came out in 69. The first disc in that, because it was a double LP. Uh, live concert, the second disc in it had each band member doing solo tracks on it. So you can kind of see the band is a little bit all over the place, all leading up to their fifth studio album, Adam Hart Mother, the one we're going to talk about here that came out in 1970. And even for this album here, the band was really still trying to find their footing. So five songs appear on this album. It did reach number one in London. So first of the Pink Floyd albums to do that, um, only reached number 55 here in the US, but it would be certified gold for 500,000 sales. Um, personally, I never liked the album cover on here. And I talked about this previously, uh, you know, with this cow on it and other cows and so forth. But um, some of you guys turned out to really like this one here. And I sort of was surprised when I found out it was done by Hypnosis, who's done the Led Zeppelin, Rainbow, UFO, and a lot of other great album covers that I really like. But apparently the album cover was a direct response to what was going on at the time and the idea of the psychedelic space rock imagery that was being used with the band to promote them. And they really wanted to explore all kinds of music. I think uh, this album here even shows them wanting to do that. And so I think that's where that goes. But they wanted to do something that was, um, you know, completely, you know, different and away from that idea of the psychedelic rock. And I guess how much further away could you get than a cow in a field? So that's at least the story behind the album cover on here. Now, the band has expressed negative opinions on this album. But again, I think that it's more to do with they were really trying to find their footing. So this is not an album that they were really yet themselves as they would later uh, develop with uh, once they got into albums like Obscure by Clouds and then ultimately their heyday period with uh, Dark Side of the Moon and The Wall and so forth. So uh, the album itself has been remastered two different times, 1994 and 2011. The version in here is the 2011 remaster. But let's also break down the album itself, because as I said, uh, you know, they were still finding their footing. Uh, this album art speaks to what's on this album here. So the first side of the LP, it's broken basically into two sides. And kind of what I found interesting is that it's very similar in nature to Uma Guma, which a lot of people consider the band's worst album, or at least most odd album. Uh, this one here, first side is the band together. The second side has them uh, doing, uh, focusing individually on the band members. So side one is a whole track, 23 minutes, 44 seconds long. Uh, Adam Hart Mother is the song. It's a suite that is on there. And it 
you know, resulted from a number of different instrumental takes uh, that the band had composed during rehearsals, originally titled Theme for an Imaginary Western. It later would carry the title of The Amazing Pudding and Untitled Epic, but it wasn't until they had to perform the song, I think it was maybe the BBC, and they needed a real title for this thing. And so they were flipping through a newspaper and they found the heading of Adam Hart Mother. And it was a story about a woman being fitted with a plutonium powered pacemaker. So that's where the title at least comes from because as it being an instrumental, it doesn't have any lyrics to grab a title from. Now the second side of this, uh, they get into the more song based uh, songs that are on here. So tracks two through five. And the uh, first song on here, If, was Waters, and that one was a more folk style ballad. Summer of 68 was by Wright. Uh, started off with a bit of folk in it, but it would uh, later build with some brass instrumentation. Kind of be probably maybe the most lively song on the album. And then Fat Old Son, which was from Gilmore. And that one was another folk influenced song. So kind of very interesting that they went from this sort of psychedelic piece as the album opener into a bunch of folk style pieces. And then they finished off with another very experimental piece. And this one here's got dialogue broken up with sound effects and instrumental, um, you know, bits where uh, a person is talking about what they're eating for breakfast. And so not as odd as some of their songs, but all in all, it's sort of, uh, you know, not a song I would return to all that often. Glad it's at the end of the album, but it is one of those things that I think keeps this album from being, a, you know, an all time classic is when they did some of these more experimental things that kind of broke the flow of how the albums go. Now let's talk about what we're all here for, which is the deluxe edition version of this that just came out on December 8th of 2023. It is a two disc set. So disc one in here is the album remastered from 2011 and disc two is the real focus, the feature part of this, a Blu-ray that has live footage of the song Adam Hart Mother. It's about 16 minutes long. It's an edited version. Uh, was a live performance at the 1971 uh, Japanese festival called Harkon Aphrodite from August 6th through 7th. And they were the headlining performer, I think, on the final night. There's also some B-roll footage, you know, background uh, type footage um, of uh, them, you know, as part of all of this, that's about three minutes long. So all in all, it's around 19 to 20 minutes that is on the Blu-ray. It's not like you're getting a full concert that's on here. This was their first performance in Japan. And interesting that their first performance in Japan was headlining a festival like this. And so, one of the other things is if you have the early years box set, which came out in 2016, uh, this video footage is on there, but it was taken from a much inferior, maybe third generation or so footage. So it wasn't very crystal clear. They found a first generation uh, tape or footage of it, cleaned it all up. And so this is much, much superior and really quite good and amazing. And since this is their earliest known um, you know, video performance uh, of this song like this, and it was the first time in Japan. It's a pretty historical piece in and of itself. And so uh, it's packaged here in a seven inch vinyl style gatefold. There's no vinyl in it. It is a CD and a Blu-ray, but it is the same size and done just like a gatefold would be. Um, obviously for the Japanese market and the festival, they've got what appears as like the OBI strip and everything. Uh, it's got the hype sticker on it, which has all the great information on it and sort of the deluxe uh, gold reflective style, uh, Willy Wonka golden ticket, you know, you found sort of thing. The backside is interesting because they put the original album cover um, or, you know, photo on the backside of this here. But uh, if you can look at the way it comes, you get the gatefold and then below it here is the book. It is outside of the packaging, but they put this over it because the back of the book doesn't actually look like that. So um, the memorabilia that's part of this thing, and I'm going to show it all to you here in just a bit. We get a replica pamphlet uh, from the performance. You get a venue map flyer that had to do with the festival, how to get around in it. 
uh, an Osaka show poster, a replica ticket, and as I mentioned, that 60 page book. So it comes typical style to Japanese uh, releases. It's in this plastic bag that uh, unpeels and I'll take it out. It's actually very, very tightly in there and a little difficult, uh, not so much to get out, but definitely uh, much more uh, difficult to get back into this bag. So uh, be careful, you don't wanna split it. All right, so as I mentioned, here's that uh, backside piece. We're gonna put that down. Here's the book that's in it, the 60 page book. Uh, it's very nice in here. Um, what's interesting is this is all taken from the video footage. So even if you don't have a Blu-ray player or you're like me and you'll probably only watch it once and you know never put it back on because it's not a, an entire concert, uh, you get all of that stuff shot right here. So I was actually really glad, I hadn't really read very closely before picking this up, that it was coming with a book. So this was a nice little surprise for me um, as I was expecting the replica stuff and the Blu-ray, but to get it in a book format where I can really sit and look at the images and focus in on this stuff. There's some of the behind the scenes footage, the B-roll stuff that they got about three minutes worth of that. Look at that great shot there. Um, so all in all, it's very, very cool um, book that's in here. I guess that was the last page. Uh, so again, there's the cover of it. 1971, um, you know, flyer performance. So uh, the OBI is actually wrapped all the way around this. I'm going to put my hand at the bottom because when we open it, it's got the other memorabilia in here. I'm going to just take that out and put it down, which I'll do in just a moment. But you can see the OBI wraps around it so it does not fall off. You can move it around, but it um, does not fall off. So that's very nice. Nothing in this part of it here. Over here, we get the two discs, which are individually in sleeves. Uh, very nice. Not sure why they clipped them the way that they did. And then typical to Japanese fashion, they do have the CDs in these plastic sleeves, but the plastic sleeves stick out from the top, which makes it a little awkward and not entirely sure, uh, again, why they did that. I'll pull these out just so you can see uh, the discs themselves, um, having the logo of uh, what the perform, you know, the or what's on it, I should say. So that being the Blu-ray, and then we get the um, CD itself. And this stuff follows uh, everything from the 2011 remaster. So if you have uh, the original like me, then you can see that it's all following the same thing with it. There is an oversized book that is the same one that comes with the CD. Uh, so it still has all the same, um, you know, photos. I mean, very well done. If you don't have that 2011, then this one here is uh, really great to get. But if you've already got the 2011, then it's really coming down to the Blu-ray, this book here, and the um, memorabilia stuff. So this is the pamphlet that was given out. There's some additional memorabilia in the middle of it. I'm going to slide that out and I'll show it to you in just a bit. It's a nice thick pamphlet that's here. Uh, it tells you who's performing at the festival and I'm assuming it has, you know, show times and other things. Kind of like a playbill for going to see a, you know, a Broadway show or something like that. The thing is, it's all in Japanese as one would expect. And I guess there's a bit of historicalness to it where you want to keep it that way. But I was disappointed to see that I couldn't read any of it. There's no translation. It's not split in half where there's an English portion of it. So all in Japanese. Uh, it's in black and white. Again, it's a replica of the original one. But um, I would have liked it for the American market, at least, that they had cleaned that up and um, done an American version in English and so forth. The rest of the stuff, I'm kind of fine with it being the way it is. We do get uh, the ticket, and it is a double-sided print, which is always nice. Sometimes you just get the single-sided and they leave off the rest. This is maybe the most cool part. Uh, this is the front side of it, but this is the venue map. And you can see how it's drawn, and it tells you where uh, you know places are, probably bathrooms, where to eat, that sort of stuff. And so there's that. And then you get a poster that is from the Osaka show, 
It's a very nice poster indeed. Again, all in Japanese. So it certainly keeps to uh, the originalness of it and what you would expect. But at the same time, as I said, you know, for those of us that don't speak Japanese, it is a little bit uh, sort of, well, I can look at it, but I can't really read or dive into it. And there's no writing inside this book here. So there's no history or anything of that nature. It is literally just pictures all the way through in it. So whereas I would have liked there to have been a documentary on this, uh, narration, a write-up, I don't know, something along that nature. It's not really here. Uh, the centerpiece of this, obviously, is the Blu-ray. That's what it's behind, and um, they just kind of ended up doing a, a big packaging around it. I really wish they had done the live concert uh, even if they only had this video portion of it, I would have liked that on a CD or as a bonus track to the album. Something to make it a little bit different. So that's not here. Uh, in terms of the versions, you know, whether it's uh, this one here or the deluxe edition, the deluxe one's probably the definitive one. Has everything that the CD has, but you get all that bonus stuff. And it's just very cool packaging. Um, I just really like... The, the Japanese OBI strips with it. It just adds something more than that cow on the cover that I don't really like. So all in all, maybe this one being the superior of the two, but in terms of the footage, in terms of what it comes with, I think it's really only for hardcore collectors like myself. I have everything Floyd has done, including uh, things like the early years box set. You know, it was a $500 box set, but I had to shell out for it. So... It's one of those sort of things. So just know that going into it, do your homework. Maybe this video told you what you need to know about it. But also at 39 bucks, it's a very good deal, especially in today's day and age where deluxe editions are just astronomically priced. So I think it's well worth the $40 if you want to pick it up and have it. Just kind of makes me like a little, you know, giddy schoolboy going through everything. But I'll probably only go through it a few times and otherwise it'll just sit on the wall. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, certainly let me know your thoughts if you chose to pick this up. And also just if you like the album or not would be interesting because it's one of my lesser uh, favorite albums. I'm going to be doing a full album ranking for the band too that will post shortly. Uh, this one here, you'll you know soon see where it falls within my ranking. All right, everyone, take care. Have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.